So welcome, and thank you for coming to 360 Yield Center to our indoor field day. It's about the only place to have a field day in January. We've converted this horse arena, and we're going to have a good time running some equipment. It's kind of fun to run stuff indoors in January, kind of an odd, kind of an odd thing. So we're standing in front of a brand new Heggy. High drop or wide drop set up on it, undercover set up on it. We're going to walk you through some of the features, some of the things that we saw this year coming out of a challenging growing season of 2019. So we know about nitrogen. We know the way it moves. It doesn't spread out. You can see here on this slide, we've got alternating green and yellow strips through our ryegrass. Wide drop system was run through here. You would think that nitrogen, when it hit the surface, spread out and fertilized all that grass. It didn't. Nitrogen dilutes and it moves down with water. It leaches away from us. It gets into our water source. We can see here, knowing how nitrogen moves, what we need to do with it to get it into our corn plants. The reason a Y drop works is not only it works with the fact that corn uses 75% of its nitrogen after V10, it also works by the fact that it places nitrogen in the root zone. 90 some percent of a corn plant's root mass is in a seven inch diameter by seven inch tall column. You can see it here in this cutaway. Where's most of the feeding happening? It's happening right around the base of that plant. The reason a Y drop works, the reason we can get away with putting nitrogen on the surface is stem water magnification. The way a corn plant is designed, those leaves funnel water to the base of the plant. We proved it here. You can see these PVC pipes taped and caulked around the base of a plant. We have an 8x magnification of rain at the base of the plant versus the middle of the row, 15 inches away. So if we can see where the moisture line is, where do you think we ought to put the fertilizer? Right next to the roots. Some of you came to our Proving Grounds plot this summer, took a look at this plot with me in my session. I went to school at University of Illinois, got a degree in agronomy, and I learned that corn takes up 1.1 pounds of nitrogen per bushel. And that is true, that's what corn takes up. So that's what most people apply to every corn crop. So if I have a yield goal of 215 bushel, that's 250 pounds. I called my retailer, I said, weed and feed, check, my nitrogen's done for the year. I said, what if I've been following 360 a little bit, I wanna try and do a little bit better job. I'm going to intentionally band my base rate of nitrogen with the planter, then I'm gonna come back with Y drop and add what the corn plant's going to need based on the year. With that, I'm gonna cut my rate. I'm gonna save some money on fertilizer. With the broadcast, we hit it. My agronomist and my agronomy professor was right. 1.1 pounds per bushel, we made 218 bushel. I made three bushel above my yield goal. But what about over here? By split applying and banding it next to the root system with the planter and with the Y drop machine, I made 240. I had a 22 bushel gain and my nitrogen use efficiency was 0.9. It wasn't the 0.7 that we shoot for, but hey, that was 2019. Don't get me started on that. Mineralization was lowest it's ever been. Here, I had $100 in fertilizer cost. I saved some money on the application. It was easy. I called the co-op and they did it. Over here, I spent some money on application, but I saved it on fertilizer. Why did the situation on the right turn out so much better for me? I had the same $108 investment in both systems. I sold that corn out of the field this fall in central Illinois for 375. Basis was good around here this fall. And my gain on every acre of corn by changing my nitrogen system was $82. If I'm a thousand acre corn farmer, that's an $80,000 bill in my checkbook at the end of the year. Just by, with the same input, just by handling it differently and having higher efficiency. We are also looking at undercover. That's the nozzle bodies you're looking at here mounted halfway up on these riser tubes. If we're gonna to go to the expense of fungicide, insecticide, or both in our high yielding corn management program, we spend the same whether we get 5% coverage or 95% coverage. It's the same cost per acre, same active ingredient. So why wouldn't we, knowing where fungal diseases come from, splash up from the soil, why wouldn't we move that expensive fungicide into the canopy. Why would we blow it over the top? Here you can see an aerial versus an undercover. 
the leaf disease difference. What else are we controlling? Most of the time when we run an expensive fungicide pass for another four to six dollars an acre, we're throwing in a, an insecticide. What are we after? The silk clipping Japanese beetles. And then on soybeans, we're after bean leaf beetles and aphids. What side of the leaf are those aphids on? They're not on the top, they're on the bottom. During our spray period, during the daylight hours of the day, the insects are not on top in the sun, they're underneath in the shade of the canopy. So if we're gonna spend the money on fungicide insecticide on soybeans, we should take the effort and put it on the bottom. Now we're gonna have a little demo over here. We've got some rolling corn boards. We're gonna fire up with Y drop, I believe here, guys. <clears throat> and they're gonna go ahead whenever they're ready. We're gonna do the undercover demo. On your right hand side, we've got top only. And we're gonna let these guys get their nozzles switched over here on the other side. But coverage is the name of the game with fungicide insecticide. Your fungal diseases splash up out of the soil surface. They make their way up the plant. And if we do severe photosynthesis damage by eliminating green leaf tissue and replacing it with disease lesions, we're instantly losing yield. There's an economic return threshold like everything, but that's, that's part of where we're at. So we have here some plants from our, fungicide, or from our undercover demo. On this side where we did top down only, you can see really well with this water sensitive paper, we got the tops of the leaves very well. Good coverage. Where are the fungal infection points and where are the insects on the bottom? We have zero coverage on the bottom and very poor coverage on the ear leaf. These guys are running the demo right now. They're gonna pull the plants and we're gonna run the demo for you here right away. So Reed has the undercover. I already showed you the top down. Eric will hold that up to the camera. Here, we got not only got coverage really well on the top sides of the leaves, but look at the undersides. Coverage on the underside, good coverage here. On a typical corn plant, there'd be an ear of corn sitting right here. The ear leaf is a major contributor. Look at the coverage and protection that we have on the ear leaf, a significant amount of starch comes from the ear leaf. So going to the extra effort for the same investment of pesticide and fungicide, we're gonna have much better chance of payoff on that expensive investment by putting the pesticide where it goes. We're gonna reset our corn boards and then we're gonna show you a demonstration with the Y-Drop system. So people think Y-Drop looks like a simple system and it is, but you're not looking at design A. Part of making a Y drop work is the stem water situation that we talked about. So it's imperative that we place that nitrogen at the base of the plant where we can utilize the stem water effect. You can drizzle nitrogen out with an airplane, you can drizzle it out with a rig like this, and you can swing a garden hose down between the rows pretty cheaply. But is it worth the effort if you're not putting it in the stem water zone? So these guys are gonna go ahead whenever they're ready and they're gonna fire up a demonstration of the Y drop system. We've got nitrogen coming out these hoses and we're chaining it together right at the base of the plant and feeding the root system where it exists. So if I'm gonna ask you to go out into high clearance crops, there comes some operator issues with that. That's not an easy thing to do to go into head high corn when you can't see the ground. Reed Oberly is one of our engineers and he came up with a couple of very strong solutions to help the operator make a Y drop pass happen. All right, so there's obviously a lot of really great benefits to go into late season application, like Dave's already talked about, but there are definitely some challenges that come with it, especially if you're the one who's actually operating the machine, right? The first one is you're trying to go through this tall crop, you know, you've got wind blowing, you're on a little bit of topography, and it, sometimes it can get really, really hard to see where the center of your corn row is where you're trying to get your high clearance machine to go through, even if you're running with a, with a deer or a, or a Patriot as well. Um, 
you know, so down corn becomes a real thing. You start to really run it over, you're trying to help it, not hurt it here, but you still end up running over just a little bit of it. And there has to be a good solution to that, right? Um, and I'm not gonna say that there aren't great OEM solutions out there. However, the problem with this, they are 100% GPS based. Um, and while that works generally very, very well for planting and that kind of stuff, um, what about you know when your planter is drifting? What about if you have a little bit of topography? You're not actually just running right in the center of that row. You know, so GPS systems. The way I like to describe this difference between GPS and tactile is GPS is the thing about you're running to the other end of this building. You can see all of it, all the obstacles in your way pretty well, and that's a good thing. However, you might stumble because you don't know that there's a rock or there might be something that you might trip over down there because you're looking up. Vice versa on tactile, you're basically you're running to the other end of the building, but you're looking straight down at your feet. So you might not. Uh, stumble on that rock, but you might run right into that combine because you don't know it's there, right? So there's obviously benefits to both of those. The best way to do it is if you can marry those two systems together. And that's exactly what we've done uh, with the guide system. Essentially, we pull in your OEM GPS position, the positional data there, and then we go ahead and we also get the tactile data from the bottom feelers, and we shift your GPS point based off of what the feeler is telling us uh, as far as your cross track or your position in the row. So if you're three inches off to the left, it's going to shift your GPS point to tell you that you're three inches off to the left, therefore making your OEM controller, your, your deer auto track that works so well, push you a little bit off to make, make sure that, remember, you're not wanting to stay necessarily just on your AB line. You want to be, <clears throat> you want to be in the center of the row. Um, very, very similar placement is key when we're talking about wide drop, right? And so we know that we want to have our wide drop bases about 12 to 14 inches off the ground. Make sure that your hoses that are gripping through here, just like what we showed, make sure those are sitting right along the base of the plant, right in that root zone where we want the, where we want the nitrogen to be going to be as useful as it can be. Um, so what we've done there, you know, once again, there are really good OEM systems that um, can help us out. But the problem is those ultrasonic sensors don't work very well when it comes to looking through the foliage of the plant. Um, you know, they work very, really, very well on bare ground. They work really well in short, uh, uh, excuse me, early season crops, but they can't do very well as soon as the canopy is closed. Um, so once again, we've done something very similar to what we did with Guide. Um, we went with a tactile system, and Dave's gonna demonstrate it here. Basically, this just mounts to the bottom of the, of the base. And as he lifts up, it goes up, and as he comes down, it comes back down, just like you would expect it to, right? So all we've done here is we've unplugged the ultrasonic sensors and we plugged our system in instead, and it doesn't know the difference. So you still have your Boomtrack Pro, you still have your NORAC UC5 or UC7, and they work just as well as they ever have, but actually they're gonna work better now because they have better positional data. So what we're doing here is we're looking for better ROI on what we're doing to make it a little bit easier for you to do it, as well as reducing your stress, reducing your crop damage, um, and just maximizing the ROI on what you're doing here.